What is up, everyone, and welcome to I'll Take a Shot at That, the podcast for thinkers, wanderers, and drinking ponderers. I am your host, Matthew Hendershot, and I've got an interesting show for you today. I have to announce to you guys that I'm going to take eine kleine summa pausa. I'm going to take a little bit of a summer break. I've been hired to go on a, on a photography assignment with the American punk rock band Masked Intruder, uh, and it's going to pull me away from the studio for about a month, and I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to hit the weekly publication schedule, and in fact, I'm already a little bit behind. So this week, what I have for you is a replay of my appearance on the Intruder Green podcast. Um, Intruder Green was obviously our guest on the show last week, and this week I was a guest on his show. So I'm going to play uh, his podcast for you instead of a podcast this week, and then uh, there might be one or two more episodes, but... Uh, from uh, the middle of July to the middle of August, I'm, I'm just going to have to take a break. There's just too much crazy stuff going on here in Germany. Obviously, please stay connected with me over on Instagram, uh, at Shot at That, or on Facebook. You can find us, facebook.com slash Shot at That, or visit the Patreon, patreon.com slash Shot at That, to keep in touch, and uh, hopefully we'll have some bonus content along the way this summer. And I look forward to seeing you on the backside. We certainly will be back middle of August with brand new episodes of I'll Take a Shot at That. But for now, I hope you enjoy this special episode of I'll Take a Shot at That featuring the Intruder Green podcast. Hi, I'm Intruder Green. You might know me from things like Highfield Festival, Airbrack Abbey, and Bumble. Welcome to the Intruder Green podcast. Uh, we got a nice, interesting episode today. It's a little spicy. Uh, we're mixing it up with a buddy. Uh, well, yeah buddies or buddy uh matthew hendershot uh who does another podcast called i'll take a shot at that and we're doing like a little crossover thing you know like the avengers so uh i got to do his podcast and he did the intruder green podcast and uh yeah matthew is basically like a called i don't know i don't know what to call him exactly almost like a co-producer but he doesn't like take credit for that because he probably doesn't want to put his name on such a uh inferior product as the intruder green podcast but you know we're getting better and he's like kind of like my podcast guru he's like hey don't do that and then i'm like but I, I think it's good that way and he's like yeah well you're wrong and i'm like uh well i already did it so that's the way it is and he's like well fine maybe try better next time and you know eventually i do because i realize he's right um, but yeah, he's gonna be helping me set up some nice things for the future, uh, as far as making this whole thing sound better. And uh, he's also gonna be going on tr on tour with Mass Intruder as our uh, photographer and videographer. Uh, so yeah, if you see, uh, I don't know, he, I don't know what a, if he's gonna be like incognito or what when he's on the, on the at the shows with us in Europe. But uh, you might see him like take a pictures and stuff on stage when all the other photographers get their photo pass and they can only take pictures for like the first three songs or whatever i don't know why they do that that's a weird thing but i get it too because sometimes they get in the way and then i'm all like hey i want to like wave my butt in front of some people and get, there's a photographer in a way but you know there's also like security guards always in a way too so maybe it don't matter i don't know um but anyway i gotta give a shout out to the patrons of the great patreon Supporting the podcast, we got Elizabeth Bernards, John Nicholas, James, Michael, Lamar, Irving, Edward, Donald, Calvin, Magolder's son. Did I do son already? Ah, oh, we're going to roll with that for now. Uh, Heather Royston, Vaughn Cotton, Chelsea McNally, Carlos Hernandez, Luke Ellis, and Jared Estep. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for everybody to, uh, who uh, gives me some money on a Patreon. Makes this all uh, possible, really, uh, you know. Like I always say, uh, it, podcasting isn't super expensive, but it does take a lot of time, and uh, it does cost some money for, like, uh, you know, just, what do you call it, the hosting, like, you gotta pay a host to be a good host on the internet and stuff like that. Um, and, like, I also am saying, like, I, I really want to invest eventually in some better gear, <laughs> Looking into that right now, so maybe within the next uh, month or so, we'll we'll have something better, better sounded stuff for you guys. And I gotta say, uh, we did this one at Matthew's studio, so it's probably the best sounding episode what we got so far. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Based on that, uh, if you want to become a, uh, if you want to get on a Patreon, it's just patreon.com/intrudergreen, and uh, the 
if you don't know what Patreon is, I'm sure most people at this point, if you listen to a podcast, you probably know, but it's basically just a website that lets you, uh, you set up donations. Uh, it's, you know, they, they keep it nice and safe. So your, your credit card information ain't going to like leak out to nobody like Sony or something. Uh, but yeah, then you can like, yeah, it's, you, you can sign up for like a dollar or like way more than that if you want. And, uh, yeah, I got little tiers set up so you can like be like, hey, have a True to Green sing my birthday song or something. And uh, also, yeah, I'm trying to work on some new things there. Uh, if you if you can't do that, uh, maybe hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Uh, it's all just at True to Green. And uh, what else do I got? Oh, we got the calling line. Please hit me up on the calling line. I miss hearing you guys' uh, voices. Uh, and bring up some interesting topics for me to talk about instead of me just babbling on about, uh, you know, my technology woes and all that. Uh, you can hit me up at uh, 608-535-9608. That's the Intruder Green call in line. You can uh, leave a message uh, and I'll uh, put it on the show. Or uh, if you ask me specifically not to, but you just wanted to say hi or bring up something for me to talk about, then I will just talk about it and not put your voice on. Because I know some people are uh, sensitive or whatever. So, anyway, like I said, Matthew Hendershot, his sh- his podcast is called I'll Take a Shot at That, as well as uh, he works on a, this other one about marijuana. We talk about that in the show. It's called uh, uh, Brave New Weed. Uh, they're, they're both real good. You should check them out. And, uh, yeah, without further ado, on with the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... Intruder Green. An inmate at... Federal Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Hendershot on the Intruder Green Podcast. Hi, how you doing, buddy? Hi. That's um, also hi and how I'm doing. Yeah, that's right. I I will have to say, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Matthew has been uh, he- helping me out with the podcast for a long time now. He's uh, my caterer, and uh, <laughs> I'm real hungry all the time, so it's real helpful. I can't cook enough. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's teaching me how to cook, actually. He's done a little bit of that. That is true. And we're trying to film some uh, cooking shows together uh, because you're real good with the cameras and stuff and technology and all that. Appreciate I ain't it. too good with the technology, but I know, like, when to strike. Like, when to use technology to, like, you know, hey, uh, you got to crack a safe? I don't know how to do it, but I know where a safe is. All this right. calls for science. That's right. <laughs> and then, so you're my science guy. Ah. This is the way that things work. It's, 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 uh, you know, we're giving people a little one-on-one in the, uh, criminal background, whatever. Well, I, I, I mean, come on. Everybody's seen John Wick, right? Like he's got a That's doctor, right. he's got a tech guy. He's got I a, did see that movie. Yeah. I mean, does he have all those? Yeah. I didn't remember that. Oh, like there's the doctor. I mean, well, maybe I mean, across all the. Oh, I never saw the. Second and third one. I need to because they're real good movies. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're uh, real good. Uh, I saw him shoot a bunch of guys. It looked real cool. Yeah. So I imagine then you've seen like um, the raid. No, I never saw the raid. Oh, I, that looks amazing too. Yeah. I mean, if you like John Wick, you'll love the raid. Oh yeah, it's same kind of deal. I, I like and then and then so. Oh right, that sounds great. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting movie. I love it. Yeah. I want to see it. I want to see them all. I love movies, and especially if there's lots of like action and violence and crime. Um, yeah, well, the raid, especially fall. like people getting away with crimes, because it makes me like, oh, that's inspiring. <laughs> I love that word, inspiring. We t- keep talking about that. Uh, so, Matthew, you, you've been inspired a lot tonight. I have been. Yeah. We're doing a back-to-back thing here. Uh, I just did your podcast, that's which right. is called. 
I'll take a shot at that. All right. What's the, what's I'll take a shot at that all about? Uh, yeah. So, uh, I have for eight months now, I guess it's close to eight months. Holy shit. Right. I know. I feel the same way. Uh, you've been doing the podcast for eight months. Um, no, I've been living in Leipzig. Oh, okay. For eight months. So I moved here in October of 2018. Yes. All right. Yeah, because it's 2019 now. That's correct. I understand how these things can be confusing. Uh, Yeah, so that's like eight months. Mm -hmm. And uh, as part of coming over here, one of the things that I wanted to challenge myself to do was to create a uh, podcast that could be a document of my experience of uh, meeting people, doing things, trying stuff, learning uh, how to do this stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and how to just like reacclimate to a new place. Oh yeah. Because reacclimating is difficult. Yeah, re- recombobulating. Recombobulating, recombobulating. Yeah. Whatever you, you want to call it. Discombobulated and then yeah. you recombobulate. You got to combobulate yourself. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you end up, yeah, you go to prison or something and you end up in there and, uh, it ain't so cool, but you know how that works. And then you get out into the world, and especially with the way technology works these days, you get going away, and you come back, and it's like, holy shit, they got like flip phones now. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I gotta go make a drug deal. Where's my payphone? Oh, they're all gone. Everybody's got cell phones now. Like what? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a true story <laughs> to somebody <laughs> that happened once. That's you're probably correct. Yeah, I believe it to be true. <laughs> That's all you need, I guess. Yeah. So this podcast is all about your uh, journey into like uh, kind of just figuring shit out. I mean, it, it's it's not like like I wouldn't ever claim it to be like an instruction manual because that doesn't make sense. But it's just what I'm going through, and it, if I well, can, like it's an instruction manual written by someone who's like learning and figuring the very out how to build a thing. It, yeah. No, it's just exactly. like it, it's just like. Uh, it's what I'm going through. Yeah. It's, I, I'm trying to be as honest as I can be about experience that I'm having. I got a couple of great guys, uh, Jake and Justin, that are on the show that just, uh, they, they have their own strong points of view. They are intelligent and informative, and it's a pleasure to be able to uh, tell my story and then also collect the perspectives along with it from... Oh, yeah. Uh, the guests that we have on for the two wonderful co-hosts and and we share it with people as as best we can and as honestly as we can and we try and have a lot of fun because we joke around and we drink too much oh yeah that's right you guys do drink it's called i'll take a shot at that right so you guys do shots yeah so there's a a few staged situations where at the start of the show we all take a shot of booze and then we look for opportunities to take additional shots of booze, and people are welcome to take as many shots of booze as they would like. And it, we kind of play at it as a joke that it right. lubricates the conversation. Oh, yeah. And it certainly I'll, does. Yeah, I believe that to be true. <laughs> I, I've, I've done plenty of podcasts myself, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it'd be real good if we were both a little bit drunk. Or well, not drunk, but, you know, like, you know, basically, well, yeah, drunk. Yeah, to the point of where you're not, like, censoring yourself exactly, yeah. or, you know, you're able to not overthink, but not underthink. <laughs> yeah, that's time. right. Don't think. That's the <laughs> that's the key. No, think think perfectly. That. Uh, yeah. And apparently booze leads to that. Perfect thinking. Well, yeah, there's like a, there's a, a sine wave, right? Like, you gotta <laughs> yeah. get a little bit drunk. And then you got to chill for a bit so that you dip below the line. This is why you're my you podcast have another beer, guru. And then you sort of like flow. Yeah. Where if you just have too much, then you just cliff and you're done. Oh, yeah. I think somebody said something about that with bowling once. It's like when you go bowling, you get you two drinks or three drinks. It depends on a person. But uh, sometimes you, you'll, you'll have your warm-up game and then you'll like bowl two amazing games. And you're like riding the crest of glory of uh drink and uh then you have like one too many and suddenly you just suck at bowling yeah i I think that's probably true of things much more complicated than bowling yeah but bowling is a good like uh it is you're right good whatever you control baseline yeah yeah (laughs) is is a good thing to base everything on bowling 
Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. I think uh, the Coen brothers made a movie about that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> the Big Lebowski. It was all about bowling. Ah, Le- <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I think that was a line there's, from the well, movie. A, <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of bowling in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck a dude, let's go bowling. That's yeah. what they say. Sure. I believe it to be true. <laughs> so uh, that's real good. You got the, I'll take a shot at that podcast. But you've been like, you're, like I tell people, you're my podcast guru. You kind of been like, get, show me the ropes. And I'm sorry because I'm a real shitty learner. No, you're but, doing great. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I blame. Uh, I'm or, pretty sure um, the Intruder Green podcast is more popular than I'll take a shot at that. Well, that might be true, but the thing that's is changing right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody knows because uh, you know, like nobody gets to see our numbers. <laughs> that's the way we like it. But uh, you've been uh, in the podcast game for a while, and you also do. A podcast about weed, which to me is like real cool because, first of all, it's still technically illegal in a lot of places, which mm-hmm. is cool. I mean, in a way, it's not cool because you want something that's cool to be. Oh, I don't know. I'm having a conundrum now. Uh, you know, it's like uh, you want it to be cool because it's cool, but it's not cool, but you like it, so it's cool. Um, yes. Yeah, but being illegal is kind of cool. It makes things edgy. That's the word I'm looking for. All edgy. right, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, like uh, no, you I, the- I, I, you are not the first person to suggest this thing. That the reason why that cannabis is so exciting, uh, especially to young people, is because it's illegal, and oh, so yeah. it's like a micro rebellion, uh, and it's actually a really safe micro that's right. rebellion because it's, probably it's not really than... going to hurt you i mean yeah. there are things that you have to be concerned about because under the age of 25 maybe your brain is still developing and sure you... sorry i just got super nerdy about uh oh that's okay cannabis and and this. you you should get nerdy about <laughs> cannabis because uh and most people don't and that's that but that's like part of what like you're into like the cannabis yeah. culture and all that. Well, and it's about understanding it in a way that is uh, in the way that we interact with alcohol, right? Yeah. So, you know, when we go on, uh, I'll take a shot at that. We do shots. Uh, but we understand that like, okay, if we do three shots or four shots, yeah. it's, it's probably enough, you know, sure. and then we can stop. And as people, we don't understand how to do this with cannabis yet because we don't know how to interact with it because we ha- it's been prohibited for so long that oh yeah there's no labeling there's no instructions right there's no so, you know like i can look at my beer and it says that it's 5.2 percent right so when but, so but when you get your hands on some good weed you're like holy shit we got this good ass weed let's smoke the shit out of it well and, and then you do too much ripped. yeah yeah and you you just do too much um your body has a limited capacity for these kind of things yeah uh and and you will just you know, get too high and you yeah. can get sick. It can make people nauseous. Sure, sure. Um, and honestly, the amount that you need is so small. Really? Yeah. Like you take uh, uh, some dry herb mm-hmm. about the size of like a, uh, a penny. A penny? A penny. Like, is, like, like a one euro cent or an American penny, just like a small little. Uh, amount like yeah. not a huge joint worth or whatever just like a small penny sized amount in the palm sure. of your hand yeah I, I guess i can think about what you're saying and that's probably a safe baseline for where to start yeah and then you you try that oh yeah and then just wait and see what happens yeah and you don't have to like be the the one that needs to get higher and higher and higher it's like does it change the way you feel do you feel better okay, yeah cool go with that Sure. But then, like, what if you are like, oh, but what if I want to feel even better than that? Well, there's going to be a point of diminishing returns, just like drinking alcohol. Oh, yeah. That's like the stock market. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, if if you go, the, the problem is, like, if you don't have the patience to give yourself a, an assessment 
of how do I feel about what I've consumed? Yeah. Then you you don't learn how your body interacts with the the plant. Sure. So as long as you can start slow and not like overdose yourself to the point where you're just too high to function, you know, you wake up the next day, you feel fine because there's not really, you know, maybe you're a little groggy from a hangover or whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, you can just smoke yourself to sleep night after night after night. But are you getting anything out of that experience? <laughs> yeah. I know people who do that with booze, you know, like. Exactly. It's you just drink yourself thing. to sleep every night. And uh, yeah, but are you really uh, sleeping? I mean, you you are no, sleeping, just, you just but pass out. How good is that sleep? Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying, and uh, but so that's like a, the new thing that people need to learn, right? It's like now that le- weed has become illegal so much, it's like I th- I feel like people for the most part are still going crazy with it. Well, uh, let me ask you about the first time you got drunk. Oh yeah, All right. Wait, what you could it? ask. I don't I don't know if I will remember, but well, tell me about the first time you got drunk. Oh, uh, like, like I mean, drug. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, something along the uh, the variety of uh, peach flavored oh. something or other, and uh, it was delicious. And then uh, the next day, I smelled egg, and I wanted to puke all over the place. And I may have actually done that. I'm not technically sure, but uh, yeah, it could have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious yeah, I, peach snap. Uh, the first time I really got drunk, I had to dig my retainer out of a toilet after I had got. Yeah, I would have just let that go. <laughs> hey, man. 14 <laughs> years old. That's uh, that's a lot of money sitting in the bottom of that toilet. You got to uh, deal yeah, with that. That's true. And what are you going to do? Let mom and dad know that you uh, threw a party while they were gone and got way too drunk? And Oh, yeah. I don't know. Puked in the bathroom? You couldn't just be like, hey, mom and dad. Hi, mom and dad. F- we'll just be like, hey, I feel real sick. I don't know what's wrong. And then they'd be like, well, did you throw a party? Or like, have you been drinking? They'd be like, no. Nope. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm always drinking. I'm, I'm, I'm always drinking something, you know. I drink gin. I, I drink water. I, don't start with the gin. Yeah. Don't, don't leave with that. But you, you leave with like, I drink water. I drink juice. I drink milk. Especially with like my Cheerios in the morning, ah, I gotta oh you fucking shit up. I drink I drink all these uh, liquids and I uh, you know like yeah sometimes there's booze too. Uh, are you trying to tell me I drank too much booze, mom and dad? You tell them that and then they'll be like, <laughs> yes, uh, son or daughter, we're telling you that, and they'll be like, oh shit, I didn't know that that was the thing I, I shouldn't just do. Play it off. Yeah, just be like, kid. I'm sorry, mom and dad. I didn't know that was a bad idea. <laughs> Apparently, uh, maybe someone should have told me that earlier. <laughs> mom and dad. <laughs> and then they fucking stop feeling guilty. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. I have won, the, won this battle. All right. <laughs> it's the same thing with weed, right? <laughs> if you were like younger. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Smoking weed? You'd be like, yeah, I smoke all sorts of things. No, that don't work too good. Because <laughs> they probably don't want you smoking cigarettes either. <laughs> nah. They'd be like, I breathe air. And I breathe, uh, you know, like helium at birthday parties. <laughs> As a joke, right? <laughs> yeah. Because it makes your voice all high. That's right. Yeah. And then sometimes I make my the rest of myself high with some weed. All right. I don't know where we were going. Uh, talking about weed and uh, the culture of it lately with uh, people, you know, now that it's legal. Yeah. What do you think? People uh, abusing it too much or is it is the culture starting to change? Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, obviously culture is changing and, you know, we're recognizing that there are people who can use this plant uh, as a helpful substance. And- yeah. And it's very useful for for many many things, and it's very enjoyable for many many things. And uh, but you you can't just charge into it like a rhinoceros, it's like ah, and just yeah, that sounds good. Blow your brains out, right? <laughs> well, don't do that. Under yeah, I mean, any it, that's that's basically you know, if you overdo it, you're overdoing it, and yeah, and the it's just about what you want to get out of it and what your purpose is because like any drug 
if you're using it as a tool for a different purpose, like, you know, burying thinking about important things or sure yeah um, you're like uh you know they call it self-medicating right sure that's like what people say but it's like that's not this i don't know i feel like that's a bad term for that because like yeah fucking you could self-medicate like it is being, a bad term you're being, being in a band and like doing something like that is kind of self-medicating because you're like i don't think i could be happy if i don't fucking uh do something creative with like people that I care about and like do that as much as I can. And so like you're self-medicating, you know, like, uh, but it's a different thing than self-medicating with like actual, like, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, stuff that messes with your brain and your body, Mm. you know, I, I guess, um, the best way to put it is I just think that everybody should have a proper understanding of the amount and doses uh, that are necessary to accomplish your goal. Sure. Because I, I really think that a lot of people are just doing. Oh yeah. I'm sure that's, I mean, I'm not sure it's true. I believe it to be true. Especially in the States, because that's kind of like w- what we do in America. It's like, oh, you like that thing? We're going to do it 10 times more. Yeah, we don't need a, you don't need a a three foot bong rip <laughs> yeah. to be, <laughs> to be satisfied. Really- okay. And, and it's not to say that that's not fun. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes you just got to try it, but like, don't make it a lifestyle. Right. I mean, you could make it a lifestyle too. And if if that works, then uh, if it works, if I, it works, I don't know. You you fucking uh, you figured out the Rubik's cube that yeah, I could never solve. You know, people's bodies are unique unto themselves, and everybody is different. And there may be people out there yeah. who can do that and and function and live their lives fine. I personally know where my relationship lies yeah. and what I and can do and what I can't, and. I think that that's an important balance that anyone needs to have. And those, and those people are definitely like a, they're, 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 they're what do you call it? The, the, the fucking thing that proves the rule wrong or whatever. Ah. The exception to the rule? That's the right. That's the one. That's, you know it. That's right. Of course. There the exception always- to the rule. Or the the exception proves the rule. That's what they always say. But if if you haven't uh, done it and you're looking to have uh, an experience, just start small and figure out how your body reacts and don't do anything stupid right off the bat. Yeah, that's right. And stay in school. (laughs) But don't do, yeah, you know. Do drugs and stay in school. I mean, yeah, why not? You know, like. uh, Don't do drugs. or, Or, yeah, probably don't do either whatever no but is 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 uh <laughs> oh shit is we the drug though here goes my <laughs> it's okay nobody's listening it's all good <laughs> um so yeah that's another thing though it's like uh is is weed a drug but yeah weed's a drug yeah but alcohol is a drug uh, yeah well of course caffeine alcohol is, is a, a drug, drug but nicotine is a drug yeah these are all yeah, it's just weird to think about like how you could go out in a fucking a field and find some weed growing mm-hmm. and like eat it and get high. You can also go out into a, a field and find a weed growing, growing and eat it and die. Oh, yeah. I mean, those weeds also exist. We don't make, you know, milk thistle illegal, but if you eat it yeah. over and over, it will kill you. That's true. All right. Point taken. I don't know what the point was, but basically don't ever ingest anything uh, unless you're prepared to die. <laughs> yeah, that's a good rule. No, 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 no. That's not the rule. The rule oh. is don't ingest anything if you can look at it and think to yourself, <laughs> is this going to kill me? Oh, yeah. That's and a good rule. If, if, if you look at something and you say, if I do this, <laughs> is this going to kill me? If the answer is possibly yes, you probably shouldn't do it. Ah. Uh... You can choose to I do mean, it, yeah. and it might be really I've fun. I've definitely done that a lot with things. I mean, you never fucking know. 
<laughs> I mean, I remember drinking Huber beers back in the day, and they always had glass inside them, and I was like, holy shit, people probably shouldn't be drinking this. They could fucking die. But we still drank it because it was free. Yeah, and that's pretty low level. Yeah. As far as that's things you can stuff. do that could kill you. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's... Uh, if, if if you think it might kill you, don't do that. Yeah. Unless I mean, you're just all in. Unless you just need to live a little. Yeah. Or die a little. And then it's your, your call. Yeah. yeah. But don't die a lot. I mean, you know, some people want to die a lot. And that's sad. But uh, you should... Uh, I, I encourage everyone to uh, figure out a reason or a way to keep living. Except for Donald Trump. Do you got a way to oh, open yeah, his beer? Yeah, uh, let me hear here. There's a letter here. Oh, cool. I don't know. Can you talk about like how you got started with the whole yeah, sure. podcast? Because yeah. I'm really interested in that. Because I listen to it a lot. And so, I, I think weed is real cool because it's green. And I'm green. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a cool, uh, it's a cool drug. I guess. Yeah. So I, um, through another job that I was doing, Mm -hmm. got introduced to a man named Joe Dolce. Joe Dolce is an author. He wrote a book called Brave New Weed, which is also the name of the podcast. Uh, And he came in to give a lecture that I was part and parcel to producing uh, and also dealing with uh, the video editing and publication of this thing. Uh, and it was about his book and he talked about cannabis and the framing was this oncoming world of legal cannabis, right? Oh, we're yeah. not talking about black market stuff. We're not talking about just like weed culture, you know, hippie stoner stuff. It's about, these are the real things that are coming. So on the show, uh, so I met him uh, and I said, listen, I don't know, um, you know, what your next steps are or anything like that. But I would like to work with you because I also have an interest in this topic. And I think we should start with a podcast. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's it's interesting. There's a lot of conversations going on about podcasts right now. Yeah. They're kind of popular. It's the second sort of bump uh, for podcasts. People are moving towards a bit of a longer form of entertainment. So like 45 minutes is now not too long where... For a long time, we got shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter on YouTube, right? Yeah. Now we can get a little bit longer and longer and longer. We can have real conversations. That so that's can. the trend is to get longer. Uh, it seems to be, at least in some facets of, you know, the pop. Uh, it's hard to generalize. But yes, I think that you will see in the next years, and we're in 2019, and 2019 has already been a boom. Yeah, And I think uh, in the next few years, you're going to see a lot more podcasts coming around where people find this as a way to reach out and try and have conversations with people out there in the world. Yeah, I think it's a great way to do that. And I enjoy all the conversations I have doing this. Um, it's, 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 it, it is a nice uh, medium as far as like, you know, uh, I think we talked earlier at some point about how people are tired of staring at their phones and it's like, yeah, you know, you want to watch YouTube videos, you want to watch people's Instagrams and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you got to like, you got to have your eyes trained on its thing. And, uh, it's nice to just be able to like go about your business. Maybe you're cooking some food or like, uh, cooking some like food that's really good or something. Or like maybe some less good food, but like either way, you're probably cooking some food because it's delicious. Uh yeah, food is good. And uh, you know, like you can listen to some some podcasts during that. And uh there's a good thing to do. Mm. Yeah. I mean yeah. you could do other things too. Like uh, I don't know, go fucking climb a ladder or something. I mean, I when I cook food, I play record. Oh yeah. That- well, all right. Well, that was very hipster of me to point Yeah, that you're out. like you're like, oh, I'm so you're you're being a hipster. You're like, oh I also listen this to is podcasts. what I do, but I also yeah, that's right. You're like, I produce podcasts. I don't listen to them though. I only no. listen to records. I get to listen to so many podcasts <laughs> just because I make so many podcasts. Oh yeah. I'm involved in so many podcasts. Yeah. It's like, all right. I I, I I I'm functionally subscribed to like four podcasts uh, that's right a week. Hey, they, I I totally understand what you're saying. I get done with the tour and I'm like, 
you know, friends hit me up and they're like, hey, Intruder Green, you want to go to this show at uh, blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, fuck no. I just saw 20 shows <laughs> in 15 days. I don't want to, I don't even want to listen to punk rock anymore right now. <laughs> Which is not true. I always love punk rock because I'm Intruder Green and that's pretty much the only li- music I ever listened to ever. Right? He just All gave right. me a thumbs up. By That's the way, right, listeners. Yeah, as though like uh, that was a visual cue that we don't we're, we're not talking about. Oh, right. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's great. You you got hooked up to this uh, weed podcast because you had a mutual interest in it. Oh yeah, um, I, I I talked to him. I said we should do a podcast. We started doing the podcast. Joe and I have produced over. 50 episodes of the brave new weed podcast now over the past two years nice uh we just started doing it and we didn't stop and i think that that's the most important part is if you're going to do this you keep your promise to your listeners it seems that way you know like uh you you get people uh you guys have a patreon and stuff with it or yeah yeah uh, everything yeah. is just brave new weed patreon.com slash brave new yeah, and, yeah. and you make some money for the podcast that way and it you know it's it's really important it's it's an interesting new thing it's it's funny how new Patreon is or like that whole idea of uh people just buying a product and not having to have I mean mm. I guess I I don't want to say there's no middleman because Patreon is the middleman, right? It but, is, yeah, yeah. But at the same time it's like I mean it's the better middleman. Right. Out of other other choices that are out there. Right. You could have sponsorships and stuff like that, but then they want to fucking put their hand in like the production of the show sometimes and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, that's a, uh, yeah. And you don't want to get into a thing where it's like, you know, with the brave new weed podcast, we're very particular about, uh, who we allow to advertise on the show. Oh yeah. So like we vet these companies, we find out who it is that's trying to just pay us. Cause if somebody comes along, it's like, here, I'll give you this much money. You just talk about my brand. Right. Then it's like, all right, but who are you and and why? Yeah, right. You know, like, why do we care about this thing? I mean, so it's about. If I was in that position, I'd be like, all right, I'll talk about your brand, but I'm going to, like, you know, I'm going to actually talk about what I think about your brand. And it might not be so good, but you better give me that fucking money. And that's fine. But if somebody, uh, you know, if somebody's like, here, I'll give you this much money, just talk about my brand, tell people where they can buy it, and you don't test it and you don't know what's going on with them. Uh, and you don't know if they're legitimate or not, and it's just a new cannabis company on the market that's just hitting you up. Uh, you can, I think, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I so believe it. To be we true. always check people out, and we're like, well, we don't want to take money. We right. want to, we want to give people good information. That's so, right. So we don't allow advertisers on our show of things that we don't agree with or things that we and, don't. Oh believe man, in. and and believe me. When I say I, that's one of the things I love about the uh, Break New Weed podcast is that you, yeah, I listen to it and uh, yeah, I'm always like, yeah, these guys are really behind what they're uh, putting out there. And it's an important thing because it's such a new industry and it's sort of a life changing industry or, or a world changing industry, really. Thanks for listening to the Intruder Green Podcast. By now you probably heard about our sponsor, Stupid Rad Merch Company. And if you haven't, then listen up, because I gotta tell you, Stupid Rad Merch Company is a great web store with a bunch of your favorite bands at stuporadmerch.com. And if you're in a band and need some work done, they can get you totally covered for a modest price and super quick turnaround time. But don't just take it from me. Here's what the ladies from Bad Cop, Bad Cop had to say about it. Yeah, it's you know. great ideas. It's always pushing, always moving. Simeon is delightful to work with. He's yeah. very responsive and professional. and It's the quality of the shirts. I like them. Yeah, high quality. High very, quality. Very well done. Very well done on the ink. It, it really feels does. like a family again. Yeah. It feels like it's it's a place where you can you can trust what's happening. And don't forget to use the code PRISON at checkout and get a 15% discount on all stupid red branded apparel that's p-r-i-s-o-n i think i don't really know how to spell but those are the letters they told me to say stupidradmerch.com well it's easy to get sucked in um it's easy to be fooled 
right? So yeah, like, yeah. right now, like CBD companies have become the new like Avon. Oh yeah, and I wanted to ask you about that too, like the difference between CBD and THC. I know you've probably okay. gone on and on about it before, but like, no, it's all right. You know, we got a different audience here who might yeah. not know that much about it. No, absolutely. Uh, so what do you want to know? The difference between THC and CBD? Uh, yeah, just generally and like what what uh you know I guess maybe talk about that and then what people are offering in like how how legalization goes for either one okay so inside the cannabis plant there are more than 400 cannabinoids these are chemicals that exist inside um the most prominent and popular of these are thc and cbd and there are many variants you know thca you have cbdn there's these chemical mm-hmm. compounds, right? Sure. Uh, THC is the chemical compound that is familiar to all of us because it's what gets you high in that <laughs> psychological sense. Sure. Okay. CBD is a, in a way, counter to this because they use the same receptor cells on your cells to bind. The CBD chemical is a faster binder and has a more rigid grip. So in the presence of both THC and CBD, what happens is the THC enters your system and it wakens your receptor cells. They smell it in your system and they open up because they're like, hey, it's like, hey, I know what this is and I want. Yeah. And then if there's a lot of CBD present, the CBD is a faster binder. So it's sort of like imagine two cars are going to the same uh garage yeah and somebody opens the garage right the thc is slower to get to the garage door than the cbd is yeah cbd gets in thc can't cbd is like haha it works like a regulator sucker yeah right so there have been numerous studies that can talk about the benefits of cbd Mm mm-hmm uh in your system it's anti-inflammatory it's uh it helps with anxiety it helps with stress yeah um some people it can help them to be more uh alert other people it can help them go to sleep and people use it as oil uh there are many ways that you can do it you can uh, it's not just about smoking weed though it's like it's not just about all sorts of stuff right so any of these chemicals thc cbd any of these things from the cannabis plant can be individually extracted from the plant yeah and then you know, put out into the market, Mm -hmm. right? This is how you get THC oils that you can vape from a pen or, you know, shatter or any of these sorts of things. They are distillates of the plant in some way or another. Yeah. So when it comes to the chemical removal of CBD, you don't necessarily have to have high quality or high THC balance plants like marijuana plants. You can use hemp. Oh, because hemp, I didn't know there was a difference. They're both green, right? Uh, they are both. All right. There are uh, historically, I guess, six variants of cannabis, right? And I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, that's okay. I don't think anyone would remember six whole variants. At one point, I knew it, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't um, think anybody's going to blame you for it. Um, it's like Ruderalis and uh, Sativa and Indica okay. and Hemp. And, oh. But they, they ranged from higher concentrations of THC to lower concentrations. See? Yeah. And these are impacted in ways of, originally speaking, uh, climate, right? Like the Oh, more, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Indica dominant plants. It's just like, uh, you know, <laughs> growing grapes. Mm-hmm. No, you're 100 percent correct. Is it the same thing where if like, you yeah. you want to r- yes. have them on a mountainside so they collect more like minerals and stuff? Uh, can be. It depends on the mountainside. Oh, yeah, shit. yeah. The Terra is a thing that people talk about in the cannabis world now. Like mm-hmm. you can have how the ground is prepared. You know, and they're finding out that uh, in certain uh, insecticides and pesticides uh, stay in the ground and can be found in cannabis plants after like three generations of wow. plants. So, like, the the chemicals that we've sprayed on other crops are actually infesting. All right. In place. So, whatever you do, people listening, if you find some weed, 
Don't smoke it. Give it to me, Intruder Green, and I will dispose of it properly because it probably got some pesticides spe- in there, and you don't want to smoke those pesticides. I'll let you know when it's, uh, I'll do some testing and let you know when it's okay to smoke or eat or put in the oil. Mm. Yeah. So CBD is a chemical. It can be in- extracted from the plant. It can be extracted from the industrial hemp plant um, just because you know it's present it just it's not a uh, high density in these plants but it's present so you can extract it it just takes a lot oh yeah uh so depending on how it's done like if they're using just the stalks and the roots or if they're using the entirety of the plant or if the plants are grown specifically to produce you know flower because only the female plants produce a flower oh yeah. um so if all of these like all of these variants like are you intentionally doing this to have high cbd or is this just uh, something that's been bred for making cloth or paper or whatever uh, you can, it impacts what goes on well any good business is going to say that like even the worst of the worst like these just hemp plants that you can grow anywhere industrialized for you know fabrics and fiber yeah uh, we'll take that and we'll extract cbd from it and sure. then, okay, so you can do that and you can slam it into a gummy bear and you can sell it as a CBD gummy oh, bear. Oh, yeah. But, but those that are like the shitty mean... companies that are just like pushing it because it's a new fad. Well, and it's, it, in a way, it's really in, clever because you're using waste product, right? Yeah. Something that would not be usable sure, in any other that. way. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's deceiving when you are talking about a medicine that can actually do good for some people yeah. uh, as long as it is administered the right way and understood the right way. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, and that, that's, that's something I'm a big, uh, I don't know what to call it. An anti fan of a hater of, I don't want to be a hater, but like, mm-hmm. I guess I get it. I, I get a little, a little bit of hate, fullness for uh you know when somebody tries to uh you know bullshit their way into into stuff like that um i don't know i kind of i kind of see it similar to like uh reusable and recycling stuff that's a whole different fucking story though um uh, <laughs> uh yeah yeah I, trust me, me. trust me, me there's something there we'll get into it later okay um but yeah, I can see that as a as a as an important thing, and uh, I hope that uh, in the future, people learn to uh, a do weed on a on a decent basis. But they're not over. Oh, well, you don't really OD on weed, but you can like definitely have too much, and that's always been the thing. It's always like, especially well, in America, what? But the, 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 we're like, oh, you can't drink till you're twenty one, and then everybody turns. Well, they do it before think, they're 21, and they're like, I'm going to get wasted. We need to reframe the question. Yeah. It's not, um, you shouldn't You shouldn't stop to have to ask yourself if you have already done too much. You should be able to stop and think to yourself, well, if I haven't done enough, I can always do more. But give yourself that time to stop and actually feel how you feel and give it a minute. You know, like, it. it's not like... Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, nothing pays off immediately. Ten minutes later, if you're like, yep, I feel like I could have a little bit more, then have a little bit more. Yeah. And that's fine. But don't just go straight to your toes and then not know how to go in reverse. Because <laughs> there is no reverse. Right? Yeah. Yeah, right. And uh, it's not a competition. Right. Unfortunately. <laughs> or maybe fortunately. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase that. Because I'm like, ah, oh, if it was a competition, that'd be a fun competition or a terrifying competition. But either way, it'd be a competition and I'd be into it. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, I don't like thinking about it like a contest. No, it shouldn't be thought about as a contest, but that's like the whole saying about like drinking is like in the States, that's a big thing. It's like, oh, it's, it's basically a contest, especially when you're younger because you're like, you can't let your friends drink more than you because then you're like, lame or whatever or some like un pc term that everybody used to call each other starting with a p something like that i don't know huh do you want to uh i don't know how much time we got left but 
do you want to play a few would you rather rounds? Yeah, sure. All right. Let's, let's I feel it. like we 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 we've got well. Oh man, more now than I, I really wish I had episode. another beer for this. Oh shit. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Go ahead, hit me, man. We'll just do a couple then. I just go. Would you rather the aliens that make first contact be robotic or organic? Ooh, that's a that's a whimsical one. Uh, I would I would rather they be organic. Really? Because if they're robotic, my brain would default to the idea that there was something else organic out there that sent the robotic. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that that side sort of means two things. And if it's just like smart people, okay, maybe we deal. Right. But it could be a bomb or sure. something. Of course. You know, like, uh, you know, that's where my mind goes. It's like, what? Are, what are, huh? why don't you come to meet me yourself? It's It's kind of like going to a job interview. It's like, are you going to show? Uh, yeah, are, so are the robots gonna... are worse. Like, if robots show up, yeah. it's worse. Yeah. It's like, uh, are you just going to do a call in or are you going to fucking show up in person? Right. And if you don't show up in person, then I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know about this guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Exactly. With that completely. Exactly. Also, though, I would be kind of stoked if it was a robot because I'm real good at breaking things. Yeah. Like cell phones. And computers <laughs> and windows and stuff and i'm you like think you can break a if, robot if it's a ro- well if it's robotic in any way I, I seem to be pretty good at breaking it <laughs> so i'm like ah these guys ain't got a chance look at this fucking robot just go you set a robot down come on come and take take me on like a like an alien or you something. go you go and immediately try and download pokemon on it yeah that's right or maybe upload pokemon on it so it gets all distracted <laughs> it's like there's there's the fucking yeg for I don't know Yagabuman or whatever. <laughs> I, don't I don't want the fucking thing what the hell those things are called. I don't either. <laughs> Seems like a cool game though. I would like to actually play that sometime. Nope. I bet nope. they got a lot of good Pokemons in Germany. They're all like Links to Steiner's egg or whatever. <laughs> would you rather have a golden voice or a silver tongue? That's also a deep oh, one. Oh, no. it's deep. We're getting deep, Matt. You. That's easy for me. I'd rather have a silver tongue. Oh, really? Because you it. already have the golden oh, voice. Yeah, I don't need. <laughs> golden, <laughs> yeah, but... that's right. I'm just fine with my voice. Uh, I want a golden t- uh, silver tongue. <laughs> <laughs> silver tongue meaning you could talk anybody into anything, right? Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it. a golden voice meaning like you you can sing like a, a fucking angel. Yeah. Who needs that? I mean, there's definitely more money into uh, talking people into what you want than there is the... Uh, that's why, uh, you know... That's why I do a podcast and not a vlogcast. Well, that's that's why artists don't make no fucking money. Right? I mean, relatively speaking, <laughs> y- you, talk <laughs> about sure. people, you talk about people who got a silver tongue, they can't fucking sing. If they could, they'd be fucking singing and they'd be having a good time oh, because all, singing is fun. You're getting all metaphorical. I see it. No, no, not even. This isn't even metaphorical. Yeah, I got you. I got you. This, is just, this is just the real deal. It's like if you got a fucking golden voice, you're a good singer, of course you're going to sing and it's going to be beautiful, but nobody's going to fucking pay you for that. Mm. You still got to hustle. Mm-hmm. Like you might be able to make money with it if you become like a big rock star or like maybe you get a job with the opera. I think that's a thing. I don't know. Uh, maybe Probably. you win Eurovision. Yeah, you maybe you win <laughs> exactly Eurovision. You guys did a did a whole stint on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, if you're a silver tongue dude, then you got to fucking. Uh, that's all you need. You just be like, oh, uh, hey, I don't think I should pay for this because uh, the thing is, I don't want to, and here's why it that's important to you. And then they'd be like, oh yeah good idea you shouldn't pay for that i agree uh it's that and then you start a cult and then you got like concubines and stuff and it's real gross yeah well maybe not take it that far Uh, yeah i hope you don't but like you could (laughs) that's the problem with the world though that is like too many silver tongues not enough (laughs) golden voices that's the problem with the world okay (laughs) that's right yeah that's a good one everybody's too concentrated on the wrong shit Mm. all right i think we learned a lesson today matthew did we 
<laughs> I mean, I didn't learn shit, but I feel like somebody might gleam a fucking fragment of uh, knowledge from this whole uh, interview. Oh, well, that'll be good. I hope that is true. Yeah, I think it's, I think it could. But uh, anyway, I think we're, we're, we're about ready to wrap this up. I think we've been trailing on a long, long time here, and we can we can do it. But I want I want to know about like what your socials are and what 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 you can put out there. What where are you? Where the world what world can find you? Oh well, if you're interested in anything about Brave New Weed, all of that is just at Brave New Weed. You can go to BraveNewWeed.com to yeah. find all the regular links. That's easy enough to remember. Like all the Facebook, Instagram, everything. Brave New Weed easy uh my personal i'll take a shot at that yeah. uh, project is just at shot at that everywhere or slash shot at that or shot at that.com uh it's kind of all dumb easy to find so just go got, looking for us and we're, we're there and you got patreons going for both of those right patreon.com slash brave new weed patreon.com slash shot at that again yeah. the same same phrase for everything just punch yeah. it in and you'll find it yeah that stuff's important because it, it, you know, it helps fund the whole project. It is, it is. People, are, you know, it's like there's so much free media out there these days, but people are like, "Oh, I just wanted to be free forever." Well, it's not free. People are putting their fucking uh, blood and sweating into that, and uh, you know, they're hoping that you're gonna be interested enough to uh, throw them a fucking bone. Why don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to say it. That's just the way I like to put it. But anyway, uh, so there's the. That's 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 your stuff. And I appreciate that. Thank you for being on the podcast, Matthew. Oh man, thank you so very much. Uh, we, Green, it's been a pleasure. We should probably do it again sometime. Maybe we will. Yeah, after the tour, maybe we talk about how it how it all turns out. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And maybe I can be on a I'll take a shot of that podcast again. I think yeah, I like absolutely. that uh that booze we drank. Oh, uh, the the fiery ball. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that's wine good stuff. stuff. Uh, you guys really have stuff good. like that every time? uh yeah you know it's a little bit different every time we try and come up with something unique but i think we'll try and find some more things like that for sure all right yeah let's do it awesome excellent all right um well i guess i will probably see you soon as we get ready for the upcoming tour and uh have a good night and that's it for the intruder green podcast this week uh thanks for tuning in thank you Matt matthew hendershot for uh being on it and helping me out all the time with uh you know, figuring out how computers work and the internet and stuff. Uh, again, if you want to be a patron of the podcast, get on to patreon.com slash intruder green. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that, at intruder green. Uh, the call in number is 608 535 9608. The Intruder Green podcast is produced by Colin Bennett, hair and makeup by Genevieve Smith, set design by Dylan Raymer, catering by Matthew Hendershot, lighting by Squeak Lights, Rahway, New Jersey. Our theme song is Particles by Type Bro. Excelsior. You think cops listen to podcasts? Maybe they don't give a shit. Maybe they're like, who's this intruder green, sir? They already know who you are. That's right. (laughs) Well, no, I wear the mask, so they don't know who I am. Right, but they, yeah. Well, but you also wear the mask on your podcast. Yeah, but I'm intruder green. Yeah, but you're always like, yeah, dude. It makes sense. You're not like inconspicuous. Not. What do you mean? I mean, conspicuous. I wear a mask. That's the way it works. But when you're out. Have you ever seen like a play in, a, in, in like Broadway? You're from New York. Yeah. You, you've seen Broadway. Yeah. I've seen a yeah. lot of Broadway. They put on a mask. Nobody knows who they are. Right. Different person. But if the person that you're looking for wears a mask. Yeah. And you're the only person wearing a mask. Then you just go down to Broadway and you fucking lose them. Everybody's wearing a mask. That makes genius. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. Woo!